Hi, my name is Sebastian Tanini, and my science fair project this year was precise stellar ages, calibrating theoretical isochrones using non-local thermodynamic equilibrium conditions. So that's a lot of words, and let's break it down a little bit. The singular aim of my project was to more accurately calculate the age of stars, not only in our galaxy, but our universe as a whole. If you ever thought about it, uh, you may know that the sun's age is four and a half billion years old, but how do we know that the sun is that old? We can't just go up and ask it. Um, instead, astronomers use some really clever techniques. Um, they use properties of the sun, like its temperature, um, how large it is, how massive it is, etc. And from there, they can uh, precisely calculate how old the sun is, four and a half billion years old. So one of the tools that astronomers use to calculate the age of stars that are much further away than the sun are isochrones. And isochrones are graphs that plot stars based on their temperature and how massive they are, their gravity. And based on where a star lies on this isochrone graph, we can thus give it an age and date it. So these isochrones are based on the temperature of stars, or thermodynamic models of stars. And the thermodynamic models that we currently use to construct isochrones are known as LTE. And LTE models are fairly computationally complex, but all you need to know is that they are very good models for dense stars like our sun. But how about for less dense stars? Our older stars are much more massive, and they have their layers spread, up, spread out over a larger distance, making them less dense. And for those stars, we have to use what are known as NLTE models, or non-LTE models. So, as you may know from studying physics, or math, or any science, equilibrium assumes that things are really nice, and that all their quantities are exactly equal. And if we break equilibrium in these NLTE models, things become much more complex. So because of that, um, NLT models are like m orders of magnitude more computationally complex than existing LTE models. And all of the isochrones that astronomers use to calculate the age of stars are created through LTE models. So the aim of this project was to use NLT models for the first time to create isochrones and see if this changed how we measure the age of stars. So I did all of that, that's what all of these graphs are for, and basically the only detail that's really important is this difference you can see right here between the LTE models and the NLT models. And if you can't see that, it's fine. Basically what that, basically what that implies is that the LTE models have underestimated the age of stars by two billion years. That means that everything in our universe is actually two billion years younger than it should be in reality. Um, it's not like we made it younger, it's just that our models have predicted it to be younger than it actually is. And two billion years on the astronomical scale is still a huge amount of time. The age of our universe as a whole is 13.7 billion years. And you can see how that's a really massive discrepancy that we found. So yeah, that was my science fair project for this year. Um, unfortunately, our state science fair was canceled and the international science fair was canceled as well. But I encourage you in the future years to do and enter science fairs yourself. It's one of the best ways you can explore your interest in science, and you're never too old to enter a science fair. Um, my first science fair ever in my life uh, was actually last year uh, when I was a junior in high school. And my project from then actually won second in the state and qualified me for the International Science and Engineering Fair as well. And it opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Um, I was accepted to a prestigious research camp at MIT for my junior summer. And this year I even got into MIT to go um, as my college. And I'm sure that my science fair awards and my science fair participation uh, played a really huge role into that. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to do science for in the future, and I wish you all the best.